This is an Aberking and Rasmussen. It's just under 140 foot. It's an aluminium build and it is absolutely fascinating, not least because it was originally built in 1985, but it had a massive, massive, we can't even call it a refit, it was a rebuild in 2008. So everything from the engines being replaced to a new section of hull being added, the keel being relayed, everything, everything, everything was done in 2008. And what that's left is a really fantastic meld of an absolute classic, but with a really modern twist to it. So I'm gonna take you on board and give you the full tour. Now that bit that was added is basically this back deck because originally when you came through those doors you were pretty much at the back of the boat and they wanted to add a deck area out here and then a bathing platform down here. And there's also additional accommodation inside which of course I will show you. It's fascinating what they've done actually and it's a really, really beautiful yacht. So we're gonna head inside and squeeze through you guys. Thank you very much. And then we will take it all in. Check that out. That is stunning. It's all been recently refitted, so new headlining, new carpets, soft furnishings, that kind of thing. But as I say, the really, really big news was in 2008, and this is now effectively a 2008 boat because of the work that was done to it. If we head on forward, there's a bar area. That's another thing that was added. We've got a small, like a card table here. And if we head over here, there we go, you've got the usual sort of uh, the wine cooler and the... Is that a fridge or is it an ice maker? Ice maker in there and so forth. That's a lovely area, isn't it? It's so light and bright in here, it feels really good. Now there's access in that corner down to that lower deck at that end, but there's another access further forward. Another thing I want to show you is we've got a separate area here. This can be closed off with these absolutely gorgeous doors. Look at that. Two of those, of course, that one comes across as well. So you can divide these areas up if you want to. <laughs> Stunning, isn't it? And here we have this area. So it's another, it's like a lounge area really, isn't it? Really comfortable social space. And we've got the, the dining table up ahead as well, of course. There's a lot to look at on this one, so we'll keep on moving. It's gonna be the full tour. So crew areas, engine areas, everything. And I'm actually trying to decide which is the best way. I think we'll do the main deck first and then we'll work our way back because it's not quite what you might expect. Now the galley is in here. We'll come back that way in a moment, I think. Dayheads is on this side. Look at this. It feels so super solid. And then steps up to the pilot house, side access door. And I expected to find a main deck master cabin obvious sort of thing you'd normally expect when you looked at a few of these but in fact there's a little butler's pantry area here and then there's this which is like a study or a little library a little reading room call it what you will but just a nice little snug where you can tuck yourself away separate to the rest of the boat there's a tv here if you want to have a film night you can do but isn't that absolutely gorgeous just fantastic now I'm guessing if you wanted to turn that into a main deck cabin you could do, but I personally would leave that exactly as it is. I think that's brilliant. Okay, let's press on back. There's a lot of ground to cover on this yacht. It's a large yacht. And I think what we'll do is we'll come back to the galley and we'll loop through there and I'll show you some of the crew areas. So, galley is here, really decent size. Obviously your usual cooking equipment and the <laughs> normal stuff you expect to find in a galley that comes right on round. And then if we go forward down here, this is all crew routing in through here. So we've got more refrigeration, we've got the steps straight up to the pilot house, so they don't need to go through the accommodation if they don't want to. More cooling, um, side access door again out onto the side deck. That is that little pantry area. And then if we go down here, it takes us down to the crew cabins. So the first thing that we discover is the mess area. That's rather nice. And then the cabins are off here. So we've got this one, for example, with the ensuite. <laughs> I'm not going to go in just in case. Let's press on a bit further. Another cabin here, two singles. And then there's the crew heads over on this side with a separate shower. 
and they've come forward again. So these two cabins share that little shower area. And then this one has got the double on one side and the single on the other. So you can use it either as a double if it's a husband and wife perhaps running the boat or you could use it as two singles. There we go. Let's come on back. So as I say, these two share this and that one I'm pretty certain is an ensuite to that cabin, but based on previous experience, I'm just going to keep moving. <laughs> if you've seen one or two of my other videos, you'll know why. Okay, let's head back on up here. Isn't this grand when you come up here with all the wood panelling? It's fantastic. I think we will head... Which way should we head now? Let's head back. I'm going to show you the lower deck further aft. And then I'll show you the, um, the lower deck further forward. In fact, I might even do that in reverse. Let's see where the stairs are. Here. Okay. Yeah, we'll do this one first. And then we'll work our way up and round and down. So if we come down here, again, it's all rather magnificent, isn't it? Let's come back here. So this is guest cabins, two singles in here, and the ensuite. It's a lovely light finish everywhere, isn't it? I think it's really classy. So the toilet, there is the, um, the hot tub um, bath in this one, and the shower. And then we come out of here and cross over. Very similar deal, except that this one has the toilet and then a big shower instead, which is in the, like so. And these, of course, have hanging lockers, so this kind of stuff. Putting everything away, and the same on the other side. But yeah, big substantial cabins, and there are plenty more to show you. Let's press on forward a little bit further. This is a VIP cabin. So a little bit bigger, double bed, and we've got the nice desk area in here, or dressing table, or call it what you will. Again with the wardrobes, again with the storage, again with the AV equipment, and again, of course, with the ensuite that lives in here. And there's a big shower. Like so. There we go. Wave in the mirror. What's over here? Uh, okay, linen closet is in there, and it looks like some of the AV equipment is down there as well. And then, also in here, is the owner's cabin. So that is up through here. And this, of course, is the biggest in the boat, really big size. It's the full beam, so we're right to the edges on both sides. But a really comfortable, lovely space. Look at this. It's back right up into the corner. There we go. Fantastic. We've also got a hanging rail just here. And there's a big old walk-in closet over on this side. There we go. Look at that. Nice. And an appropriately large ensuite. So we've got the toilet and the sink and so forth here. And then the shower there. And that shower is shared with the other side. So you've got separate toilets and then the joint shower in the centre. Uh. Oh sorry madam. <laughs> I'm only kidding. There we go. In fact, twin showers in there, look at that. You can shower simultaneously. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Somebody once described sharing a shower with your loved one as being taking it in turns to stand there being cold. <laughs> At least for that one, you wouldn't need to do that, would you? Brilliant. Love that. Let's go and look at the accommodation further off because that's really interesting as well. But this, I think I'm right in saying, is the original accommodation and then the after accommodation is what was added when the boat was actually extended. So we'll come back up through here, head gently across the saloon, it's quite all right. No, no, don't worry. You're fine. You're fine. No worries. There we go. Everyone's hiding from me. I had this effect. <laughs> run, run. 
There we go. So we'll head down this one. And then we're back under the extended section. So let's come back this way. What we've got down here is a couple of things to show you. First is this rather lovely cabin here. So that's been added on. There's a lot of accommodation in this boat, actually. And again, the toilet and the shower and so forth. But check this out, because this has got a brilliant utility room. Look at this. That's fantastic, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. And this is what I mean about this boat having all the modern facilities and yet the class of a much older 80s boat. It's brilliant. More refrigeration down here and the laundry facilities as well. Pretty comprehensive. Washers and dryers just there. And in fact, we can go across here and there's more storage. And access then straight out onto the bathing platform at the back of the boat. Let's have a little look, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> Room for everything. Still plenty more to see, including the engines, because they're up here. Now, there is an access here that takes you straight up. It's like an emergency access straight out into the cockpit. So if there ever were a problem and you couldn't get to them stairs, you've got another route out, plus the one, of course, at the back of the boat that we saw that takes you out onto the bathing platform. Now, if you come up here, we've got another, <laughs> which you believe, guest cabin like so, and that's got its own ensuite tucked away there. But what I wanted to show you most was the engines there and here. If I pull the right one, that's the wrong side. We've got it. Here we go. Now these engines, as I mentioned earlier, were part of that major, major rebuild. And what we'll have down here is a pair of MTU 12V 2000s. They're 1,635 horsepower each. And they're actually giving this yacht over 20 knots. We'll do about 20, 21 knots flat out. She'll cruise anywhere between 10 and 16 knots. So, you know, for an aluminium build boat that's not a planing boat, that's pretty good. But what is very, very impressive is the efficiency. Because if you drop this back to 10 knots, which is a normal sort of cruising speed, the captain told me that there's 5,000 miles of range, and that is impressive. You don't often see a carpeted engine room. That's how clean this is. Generators are back here. There's one either side. You can get right the way around these engines. Everything is so get out of Look at that. It's a beautiful old girl, this, isn't it? Just fantastic. There we go, some of the electrics and so forth. I think I'm right in saying air conditioning. Generator down there. That one, I think, is a water maker. Pretty sure that's a water maker. Another generator there. And there's another route out of here. Up there. Up there. That's straight out onto the side deck. So that's a direct access in or out if it were needed, but your normal route would be through here, of course. Look at this. Oh, lovely little ship stuff. Okay, we've still got plenty to look at. Let's close that one up. Like so. Head back on up and we'll go and take in the pilot house and the upper deck and we'll take a wander around the outside. So back into here. It's a big yacht, isn't it? It just feels spacious and endless. Love this. Classy. That's what this is. Absolutely classy. So we're back past the galley, and these steps here will take us up to the 
raised pilot house. There we go. We've got the uh, screen covers on at the minute, so we don't got much of a view out. Obviously, when you're running, you take those off. But that's just to stop the Florida sun from beaming through with quite such intensity. But yeah, that is your bridge. So you've got your multifunction displays, your engine controls, your big ship's wheel, thruster controllers here, all that kind of stuff. That's all configured from there. We've got seating up here as well for anybody who wants to come and enjoy the ride. And those are the steps up from the crew area. So the crew can come and go directly into down to the crew cabins, to the galley, out of the boat, whatever else. But if we go back down here and through the accommodation. Communications is up here. And if we step on up, this brings us up to the upper deck or the flybridge. Again, absolutely colossal, isn't it? We've got another helm position up here. And we've got a fantastic view of Miami. Look at that. Just brilliant, isn't it? Uh, seating across here and across here. And then this lovely social space out here for people to gather and dine or drink or chat or whatever you want to do up here. It's just lovely. I love these chairs down here and these tables. Look at this. Just works of art. We've got a bimini overhead for some shade and we've got a bar area here and the barbecue. And then we'll come right on back. That's the barbecue. More seating and sun lounging. Now this owner uh, apparently the boat originally had a Boston Whaler up here. He removed that and they'd tow the tender uh, and instead he had the hot tub fitted. Obviously if you wanted to carry the tender on board you can lose the hot tub and reconfigure this for tender storage. We've got the crane here as you can see and then jet skis live at the back. Like so. Yeah, that's again it's giving you a sense of the size of the boat isn't it? Just fantastic. Okay, I think that pretty much covers it. I think the only thing we haven't done is round the side decks and onto the fore deck. So we'll come back down this way. There we go. We'll take a little loop around here. No, we won't. <laughs> we'll go this way. <laughs> there we are. This is access onto the side decks. There we go. This is from an era where really the side decks and fore deck weren't really used by guests. This was just for crew, for putting fenders out, getting to the bow, that kind of stuff. And it maximises the interior volume by keeping these fairly narrow, but you know, perfectly good to walk along. And in fact, if we come right up to the front, there we go, because it widens up here. That's the door out from that sort of study area that we saw. So that's an easier route out for guests if they do want to come up here, because in fact there is a sun pad up here, and there is seating up in the bow as well. There we go. But yeah, you wouldn't come probably right from the very back, you'd come out the side and forward. And there she is. We're next to a 105 foot azimuth, that's that photo there, and a 106 foot San Lorenzo, that's that photo there. You can see the difference, can't you? That is a lot of boat. And that, my friends, let's have a seat here, is about the size of that. I think that has been absolutely fascinating. I just want to say massive, massive thanks to Dennis and Yachts. They got this one for sale. I'll put a link to those guys in the description. And huge thanks, of course, to you all for watching. We'll catch you on another one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.